Hey, what's up? Um, this is a video about boxcar. Um, kind of like a, I would say it's used in EverQuest, but it can be used with really anything. Um, it's essentially just like a window tracker and keystroke um, distributor, I guess. Um, and we can kind of get into that, but I'm just going to go with like a first time user experience here. Uh, I got three characters loaded. You can see here we got Jordo, we got Jordito, and we got Burrito. Okay, um, these are using the absolute refresh out of the box, the EverQuest Live UI. This is exactly how they give it to you. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and launch the game. We have three characters here. So I'm launching um, Boxcar, and you'll see. It launches, you get some sort of little pop-up that says what well, came out in the re latest release, you press OK. You get a window up here at the left, which is our main window. It is empty because we have nothing set up yet. We have the game clients. The game clients are our characters. Each thing listed in here is a, a process running on your computer. The process that it's looking for is EQ game. If you want to use this with a different game, you would need to find out what the process name is and put that process name here. That would be the only thing you need to do. If you wanted to try to use this for some um, other MMO, like, you know, you want to use it for um, EQ2 or something, you know, like, I don't know what it is, or you want to use it for WoW, you know, you, in theory, could do it. Um, so let's just talk about... Um, Going back to the game clients, you can see here there's like these little test buttons. When we click them, it switches which character we're on. So this first process, 10012, is Jordita. This other process, 2124, is Jordo. This other process, 22504, is Burrito. Simple as that. <laughs> it's not complicated. Um, you're going to click on characters. You're going to make characters. The character name can be whatever you want it to be. Does not need to match your character. We can call, you know, I think Jordito was like a, a mage maybe. And um, Burrito's a druid and Jordo's a cleric. So just confirm that. Yeah, it looks like a mage. So we'll just go crazy and we'll just call one, um, you know, cleric. You know, just so people understand. They do not need to match. Um, you know, we had a mage, and we had a druid. Not the best trio. But you can see as I created them, they automatically got set to the main window, which was the window you get started with, the only window you cannot delete. So you can never delete the main window. If you reset position, Boom, it goes back to the upper left hand corner. So that's if you ever lose your window, you can reset it. Vertical layout, not a fan. I'm gonna, I probably should default to um, horizontal, but you know, it is whatever it is. You know. um, something to fix in the future. Um, enabled, if you disable this, the window's gone, but if you enable it, it's there. Character, same thing. You disable the cleric, he's out of the list. You enable him, he's there. Um, you know, you can have additional windows. Um, I'm not going to go into that because this is just the basic setup. You got your characters. Each character has 12 buttons. Um, there's also hot bars. I'm not going to go into that. Hot bars are the same thing as the 12 buttons, but they're not associated to a character. And you can just place them. Like, you know... You can place them in different windows. You can add them to the main window. Um, let's talk about the characters for a second. Um, characters, say if I wanted my clerk on the bottom, I can click and drag my clerk to the bottom. Okay, I want the druid at the top. I click and drag the druid to the top. So you can click and drag to reorganize your characters here. You're not stuck with the order that they're in, but the way that they're rendered on the screen in each window Everything's rendered, say if you had more characters down here, it would just render, which based on whether the character is enabled or not, it's going to render it in the order from top to bottom or from left to right if it's a vertical layout. 
The same is to be said about hot bars. You could, they're rendered in the order that they're defined in this list. You can drag and drop them to change the order. Pretty straightforward. Um, so that's the sitch of it. You know, now we'll go to game clients. This one was Jordita, so we're gonna select. Oh, we gotta resync. Hey, what the heck? Where are my characters at? Let's see here. Ah, there they go. I, I don't know, I think I had to switch screens, but I finally got it. So the first one, we got that. I think it was the mage. The second one was the clerk. And the last one is the druid. So now that I've assigned these characters to these processes, now I don't really need this main setting screens anymore. Okay? So I'm just going to minimize it. When you minimize the window, it goes down here into the tray. You can see this little lightning bolt icon. You right click it, you can show settings, you get this back, okay? If you close this, it's gonna prompt you. You don't wanna close it. If you exit the program, it shuts everything off. So click no, minimize, go back, okay? Now you can see I can click on Druid, I go to my Druid, I click on Mage, I go to my Mage, click on Clerk, I go to my Clerk. Now let's get into the to the buttons. Okay, the buttons default will map each character to the key one. So one will do keystroke one, two will do keystroke two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. And then for ten it does the key zero. For eleven it does the key dash, and for twelve it does the key equals. The reason for that is that, you know, by default, it's designed for EverQuest, and those are the default um, key bindings in the game. So, right out the bat, if I want, say, for instance, the Druid to stand up, if I go to the Druid here and I look for his key 9, boom, he's going to stand. I can make everyone stand. Yeah? Just clicking 9 on everyone. And so, um, that's kind of how it works. Um, you know, we can go here, we can click edit, we can name this sit. And now you see that says sit on everyone. So I, I mean on, on the druid, I can right click on this one, I can change it to sit as well. So now you're going to see these say sit. And, you know, that makes it kind of easier. You don't have to like remember, well, what was a nine key anymore? You just know that this button makes you sit. Stand, sit, you know. Simple as that. And you can see it like switches really quickly. Faster than you could really do it if you were just alt tabbing. And you don't have to think about it. Um, now for instance, you could in theory add a keybind. I'm not gonna go into keybinds right now. That's kind of a thing that you could figure out, but you know you know some people might want to do that. Um for some reason, when I record videos on my computer, because my computer is such a pile of shit, that I can't, like, my whole system is so starved for uh, resources that when I click to, like, change the background color, it doesn't work. Only when I'm recording a video. Um, not totally sure how that works, but yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah. Like, maybe if I sit here forever, <coughs> it might eventually pop up, but... Something about the library that I use for the color picker, um, the the system, it's it's kind of heavy duty, I guess. It's not. Um, I didn't implement it. It's kind of like something I just got off the internet, so you know, not too worried about debugging this right now. But um, you can change the colors and you can kind of edit all that stuff. But like, let's kind of get into. Um, how how this is powerful. So first I'm just going to um, go to my task manager and I'm just going to exit boxcar because it's getting kind of frozen from this thing. Um, so I'm just going to restart really quick. 
And so I'm just going to reassign everybody. I think it was Mage, Clerk, Druid, and we'll just minimize. So let's just say, for instance, you go into the app here and you, you know, you go to the commands and you go to the in-game macros. And so I'm just going to make a command here for everyone to follow the mage. So um, I'm on uh, Jordan right now, so we're going to target Jordy, da, da, and you know maybe there's like um, slash pause ten right here, just so that you know. And then we click slash follow. And we're going to call this the follow, okay? And I'm just going to throw this on the equal sign over here, okay? And then um, I'm going to go to burrito. I forgot to sync. And then, um, okay, so now I'm going to click on Burrito. For the clerk, I need Burrito's the Druid. So the reason I like to name my characters the same, not Druid Mage Clerk, is because it makes it easier to think about. But, you know. Some people might want to do it differently. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, but so, now i got the burrito here, who's the druid. And I also need to make a macro for him. So we'll just come over here and we'll make another macro in the game called follow. And the macro is going to be slash pause 10 slash target. Jordita, and we're going to slash follow. So let's just test this really quick, you know. Hey, looks like it worked. Okay. So now I have both of these guys, the clerk and the druid, both kind of have a follow key, and they're both on the um, 11. So what I'm going to do is on my mage, I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to say edit, and I'm going to create one that says all. Like, follow me. I'm going to make a follow me button. Okay. And what I'm going to have it do is actually instead of doing the mage key 11, I'm going to have it say druid tallbar key dot equals. And I'm going to say tallbar cleric tallbar key dot equals okay so this is kind of the syntax um, that syntax is kind of described in the help section under commands kind of goes through um, you know you just got to experiment with it there's some examples in here it explains the different commands that you can use and you kind of go through so the delineator is always the, <coughs> the tall bar <coughs> and you kind of build commands from there. But you can see I can make a command that's not just for my character. I can make it for the other characters. Or the character that I'm on. Or you can do this on any button. You can modify it. So I'm going to click save. And now I have the follow me button, right? So say for instance I'm on my mage. And I want everyone to follow me. I just click follow me. And these guys are both following me now. You see? It quickly switched to both of them. And clicked the right button. So, you know, similarly, if I want to um, do something where I do everyone sits, I could do, you know, here I could just have Druid. Let's just make this key 9. Druid key dot 9. And um, clerk. And then key dot 9. If I save this and I just say, call this one all sit, it's going to say that. You see how it says all sit there now? I select all sit. Everyone sits. You know, and obviously you're not going to have everyone doing the same thing. So, you know, maybe let's just say, let's look at our druid. Our druid has, um, you know, 
a spell in spell slot one for buffing and or healing and so we'll just do a heal so let's say um heal mage so but like understanding how this work is really like you know talk understanding how the in-game macros work um you know like and you know another great thing is just to to understand how you know um the x target works this is for live eq um x target if you don't know it is way faster than slash target it's instant so you don't have to put like pauses in there um for this example i'm going to use pauses just because like you know mu servers don't have x target that works well and but like if you're on live you should be using x target in your macros and there's probably youtube videos out there you can go look that up and explain it um, but we're just going to pause here. So it's going to target um, Jordita. Dita. And we're going to cast two. Okay. And I'm going to say, you know, healing Jordita. Okay. So if I do that, let's accept. And let's throw this on T5. And now let's go to the cleric. And... The clerk's heal, so we're going to heal mage, and we're going to do something similar. Just, you know, pause 10. Slash target. Um, Jordita. And this is a cast 1. And healing. Woohoo. Okay, so let's just go with that, and then, you know, we'll throw that on seven. Like, I don't need it to be the same, it could be different. Um, now, let's go back to, let's just say we're going to use this the one key up here. And I'm going to say heals. Heal me. You know, and then I'm just going to say this is um, druid. Key dot five, and then um, cleric, and say I even want a delay in here. I could do that. Like we do have delay, you know, then milliseconds. But for simplicity, I'm just going to put uh, cleric, and then here we are going to have it be key dot seven. Okay, and then we're going to click that. So now we have the heal me button, right? So. If I go to Jordi, then I'm like, oh man, I really need heals right now. Click this. You're going to see both my guys are healing. This guy says that. The other guy says the other thing. It just works. And if we look here, we'll see, you know, both the guys are casting. So let's just try it again. You see them both go. They're both casting minor heal. Bam. So, it, you know, like, this stuff kind of, like, just goes in however you want to build up on it. Like, it gets more and more complicated um, the more you do it. But anyway, that's enough for today. This should be enough for some people just to get started with this app. <laughs> um, you know, you could change the colors and stuff. Um, for some reason, it like, I don't know, the computer's a piece of junk. Um, feel free to... Donate uh, if you like the app. You can do it right here on the front. This will take you to my donate page, and you can donate, you know, whatever you want. I appreciate it. Maybe I'll buy a better computer. All right, y'all. Have a good one.